Hello everyone, this is Rick, and welcome to Astro Club. This video is Astral Break to Go Great White Shark Hunting. Before we get started real quick, uh, we have a bumper crop of new patrons on Patreon. We have uh, Isabel, who is an Astral Scout. Pedro Lopez, who is an Astral Scout. Wagner Yukio Matsushita, who is an Astral Master, and Everyday Chemistry, who is an Astral Master. And they'll get the videos a week in advance and an easy email where we can talk back and forth and occasionally exclusive content. And I want to thank all of the patrons and most especially the new patrons for supporting Astral Club. After the last episode, which was Astral Ex Existential Crisis, uh, I took a break, as you all remember, for the holidays. And it helps to clear the head, and I thought it was a good time to do that. And um, after that, I went to my angel. And this was just the other night. I'm recording this now on December 31st. So this was just the other night. And I went to him and I explained to him what happened. Uh, I told him that I delivered the message he wanted me to deliver. But then after that, I couldn't help myself. I had to go looking for my missing comrades, the virgin and the monk. And uh, he seemed concerned, but he said... I'm not surprised. I, I knew you wanted to do that, but I was afraid you would get yourself into some sort of a situation that you wouldn't be able to get out of or that you might fall into a trap. Uh, I said that I, I couldn't help myself. I said I found the virgin, but I could not locate the monk. His ident or his location signal seemed to be scattered. I couldn't home in on it. But the virgins was strong. And I told him what the virgin had said. I said he's a complete puppet of the master now. All he was doing was spouting the master's propaganda. Uh, it, um, it was powerful. But, you know, I recognized it for what it was. But I think it had a psychological effect on me for a period of time. And I think it even had some sort of a residual effect on some family members uh, and it, it caused some upset but that's over now however I said I request a furlough I said that I have rescued at great risk to myself two powerful counselors one from that double uh, that dual black hole trap and the other from astral hell uh, as well as send you know delivering that little message in the middle of that sun and i said i needed a furlough and for those not familiar with the word it's a military term uh that a soldier might use to request leave that's usually unpaid uh that you need a period of time to go and accomplish something and get away and i said that i needed a furlough right now because this this whole thing I recognize its importance, but I feel I'm being mired in this war. And it, I know it's necessary and I'm not giving up, but I need a break. And I consider myself an explorer, somebody who's interested in science and learning. And here I am trapped in this soldier role. And I just, I need a break and uh, so I requested a furlough. He looked a little more than a little concerned. But what was he going to do? I, he knew I wasn't going to accept no for an answer. And if he tried to tell me no, I might have said, well, then I'm just done. Consider this my resignation. But no, he understands me enough to say, fine, I'll give you a furlough. Uh, we'll make it indeterminate. You come back when you're ready and uh, we'll go from there. So I took it 
gratefully and Astral projected away. It was funny though, because I'd been so worried about what I'd say and and how I would go about getting the furlough that I didn't really give much thought to what I wanted to do now that my astral time was mine again. But then suddenly the thought came to me, great white sharks. <laughs> I wanted to test a theory that I'd had for a long time that I had never tested. And I had been interested in sharks since I was a kid in the 60s and 70s. They had always fascinated me and I'd memorized and had books on all the uh, man-eating <laughs> sharks. Those were the ones that I considered the most interesting. The tiger, the hammerhead, the great white, of course, the mako, and you name it. And uh, I had this theory that I wanted to explore. So I decided to project to the one place on Earth that you can typically reliably find great whites. However, I projected myself about 20 years into the past because I knew I was going to see predation. And from a psychological standpoint, it's easier, I find, to watch something like that, a seal being taken by a shark, when you know that it's the past rather than the present. So I aim for somewhere around the year 2000 or so. Uh, and I projected myself and suddenly I was hovering over this uh, small island. Uh, it's, uh, it's called Seal Island. It's, near, it's in South Africa near Cape Town. It's about five acres of granite. Uh, just jutting out of the sea. It's populated, it varies back and forth during the year, but it can hold as many as 64,000 Cape fur seals, which is why the great white sharks are there, because Cape fur seals are nice and fatty and make excellent, very high calorie meals for these sharks. You probably are familiar with Seal Island. If you've ever watched any of the Air Jaws TV shows, these are the shows where boats uh, circle around Seal Island and they're constantly recording, waiting for some great white shark to you know, launch itself out of the uh, ocean with a seal in its mouth. And if they're lucky, they get the shot. So that's, it's one of the few places in the world where you can reliably find great whites. And although I found, although I believe they're having troubles with them nowadays, that they, they can't find a lot of sharks. I found that out when I got back uh, from my experience. And I found out that it was probably a good idea that I launched myself back in the past because they seem to be rather scarce nowadays around Seal Island, maybe because of, Net fishing, who knows? I don't think anybody's quite sure. But it so happens it was a good idea for me to go into the past. So uh, let me tell you about my theory. And I'll tell you how I tested it and what I saw. You know that I believe that the astral body, especially when it's in the lowest level of the astral, the very lower astral, where it's at its densest, that it has certain electromechanical, or sorry, electromagnetic uh, impulses, some sort of electromagnetic field about it. Now, it's a very weak field, but sharks are very interesting creatures. They have something called the ampullae of Lorenzini, which are bottle-shaped sensory cells um, that members of the shark family have. And they're located on their snouts. These cells are filled with a jelly-like substance that is able to detect 
extremely tiny electrical signals. And these help uh, relay this information to the animal's brains. Now, every living thing uh, in the sea or anywhere else emits uh, some sort of tiny electrical signal. That's down, and, and it's down to a small clam, to a fish, to humans, to anything. And these are one of the senses that the shark family has developed over hundreds of millions of years of evolution. My test that I wanted to try to test the best way I could was I wonder if I could, in my astral body, influence the behavior of any of these sharks, i.e., would they be able to possibly pick up my signal and think of me as a possible prey item? And that's what I wanted to experiment with, to find out. Now, was I in any real physical danger? Well, by definition, I'm not in physical danger because my physical body is way back in the United States. Uh, my astral body is similarly immune to anything that a great white shark could do to it. However, from a psychological standpoint, uh, it is very possible for you to be shocked um, by the image of a great white opening up its large mouth and looking like it's going to eat you. Uh, there may be projectors out there who uh, are psychologically brave enough that they could shake something like that off. But it's a heck of a thing. And I have been, like I said, fascinated, excuse me, fascinated with sharks since I was a kid. And I remember we saw Jaws, the movie, in 1975 in the summertime while we were at the shore, the Jersey Shore, which, which is probably not the best place to see Jaws. But... That, that All that did is just even further reinforce my interest. So there I was. I was hovering over this small granite island that had all these seals in it. Now, with the astral vision, you're able to see all the way down to the sea floor. I don't know. I've never been there physically. I don't know if your physical eyes could actually do that. My guess is probably not, because based on what I know of those waters they probably get pretty murky. But with my astral eyes, I was able to see all the way down to the sea floor. So what I witnessed was um, groups of these seals swimming back and forth to the island. Now what they have to do is, yes, they like to nest and hang out on Seal Island, but there's no food there. All it is is one huge granite rock. They've got to swim through, I guess, what's called the circle of death uh, to, uh, to get to the fish. Then they got to swim back. And during that back and forth time, there's uh, normally great white sharks patrolling around the island looking for a seal that they can attack. And uh, sometimes they attack them on the surface, but then sometimes they, uh, the sharks are cruising on the bottom of the, uh, the seafloor, looking up, waiting for a seal to be swimming uh, unawares on the surface. They then launch themselves up and seize the seal. And uh, then they've got lunch. As I was watching the seals, it was just amazing how graceful they are. And you can tell that there's a good reason why these sharks have to use these amb ambush tactics. Because these things, they're like dancers in the ocean. How graceful they are. I mean, I imagine if the shark notified them that, hey, I'm here hunting you, he wouldn't be able to catch them. Because they're just, they can just turn on a dime um, and they can evade, and they're just so graceful that it would probably be impossible for the shark to catch them in any way other than basically using an ambush tactic. So I was watching these seals, and 
looking around for a likely great white shark. Well, I found one. Now this shark, I estimated was at around 15 feet, which is about four and a half meters for my uh, non-US uh, Astro Club members. So it's a pretty sizable beast. And it seemed to be just cruising along, going around in a slow circle around the island. It didn't look like it was in any hurry. It was just taking its time, occasionally looking up. So I, I watched it for a while because it's an awesome beast to, to watch. It's, it's just this end product of hundreds of millions of years of evolution and nothing is wasted. Everything is perfectly designed for its environment. But I thought it was time to start testing my theory. And I realized that this isn't a big enough scientific sample to come to any conclusions, but hey, I do what I can. So I saw it at one point actually coming more towards the surface. So I lowered myself to very near the surface of the ocean. Now I was um, a few degrees out of sync with the course that the shark seemed to be taking because I wanted to do this for a reason. And so I hovered there. I didn't have the courage to actually go into the water in front of it. But I figured, well, let me get right above the surface, just right there, and just waited. And I watched as it was swimming along, but as it got closer and closer, uh, probably when it got to within, let's say, I don't know, 10 to 15 meters, it subtly shifted course and started heading towards me. And so I stayed there, captivated, waiting, and it got closer and it got closer. And then it kicked in and sped up and then, then I just took up took off into the air. Now, that doesn't prove that it detected me. However, I think I found some interesting evidence that this shark was able to detect the tiny electromagnetic field that was my astral body and that it interpreted it as a possible food source. So that's one more little piece of evidence for my theory that uh, people in their astral bodies, at least in the lower end of the astral, when the vibratory uh, levels are fairly low, that there is an electromagnetic field that is very subtle, very slight, but perhaps a beast that has been evolving for hundreds of millions of years was able to detect me. And as such, uh, I thought that uh, was very fascinating. It was a little thrilling too, to be that close, because I waited till he was about Mm, four meters away <laughs> before I uh, decided to take off just to, to really test the theory. And uh, that's about as close as I probably want to get to a typical uh, great white. And um, so that was a lot of fun. And I was happy to kind of get back to my little version of science and, and, uh, and maybe do some more uh, some exploration again because this, uh, this whole war thing, it was wearing me down. And I, uh, I always, always considered myself much more of an explorer than a soldier. If you liked that episode, hit the like button. Uh, share it with those of like minds. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, make sure you hit that bell button. That way you'll always be notified 
when my new videos are posted, which is every Saturday at 8.15 a.m. Eastern Time in the United States. So you can just adjust it to whatever your local time is. Um, anyone interested in contributing uh, and becoming a patron on Patreon, there will be a link in the description. And as always, I'm Rick, and I will see you on the Astral Plane.